Hey guys, how's it going? I want to make a quick video response to a comment that somebody left on a video I just uploaded not long ago on Kevin Zacker's false Abraham's bosom teaching. And uh, I do want to uh, say that I've already got four dislikes compared to one like here, and I don't really care. Either people disliked it because I uh, am using Kevin Zacker as an example, or they dislike it because they believe the Abraham's bosom doctrine to be true. Or they dislike it just because they're trolls and they don't like me or my ministry or whatever. It doesn't matter to me either way if my videos have more dislikes than likes because, uh, you know, the truth doesn't change either way. And, uh, you know, dislikes and likes don't determine the truth. And I'm going to continue to teach the truth whether people agree with it or not. And I know that a lot of what I teach goes against the grain because there's just so many false doctrines out there that are popularly held by people. Anyways, uh, so the guy left a comment here, and this is kind of the stuff that kind of bugs me, but he says, so where did Jesus go for the three days after his death? Did he go to the Father? And I said, yes, he went to heaven. What did he tell the thief on the cross? That he would be with him in paradise, okay, which is heaven. Yes, I said that. And so, then he says, well, explain John twenty seventeen in light of your response. You seem to contradict a clear statement of Jesus after his resurrection. So, John twenty 17, I'll go to that, and I've already made a video covering this, and I told him, and I'll show that. John twenty seventeen. Jesus basically says to Mary not to touch him because he had not yet ascended to the Father. Okay, John twenty seventeen says, Jesus saith unto her, Touch me not, for I am not yet ascended to my Father, but go to my brethren, and say unto them, I ascend unto my Father, and your Father, and to my God, and to your God. So you can say, well, then how could Jesus be, how could Jesus went to heaven with the Father for three days, when here he tells Mary that he had not yet ascended to his father. So I've already talked about this verse in the past. I told him I'd make a video response, and um, I said Jesus basically meant that he still had time on earth here. He wasn't, uh, he hasn't went to stay permanently with the father yet, and he meant not to cling to him because he had more things to do before he was to ascend. And so he said he would wait for my video response, and so I sent him a link to a video where I already covered it. And I'm glad that I titled this video right after the verse, John 2017. Okay, and I made this in December 19th of 2016, so over a year ago. And it's pretty cool, I like to, to be able to go back and look at some of the videos that I did. And maybe my understanding's changed between now and then in some ways. On different things, you know, I get a better, clearer understanding of things. But I'll play some of this. So what did he really mean? So, he didn't really mean touch me, okay? Uh, this is more talking about, like, cleaving to him, okay? These women, this woman came to him and clean, clean, uh, clinged to him, cleaved to him, sorry. Uh, you know, like, holding on to him, like, you know, I love you, I need you, I don't want you to go, or, you know, I... I'm here with you or whatever, and uh, so that's what he that's means. What he don't cleave don't to cleave me. me. And, you know, he said, I am not yet ascended to my father. What he means is that he hasn't yet, uh, you know, took in his position in heaven and sat down at the right hand of God where he is forever now, okay? He hasn't done that yet. What he meant is I still have a little bit of business to, to do here. Actually, I have something for you to do. Go to the brethren and say unto them, I ascend unto my father and your father and to my God, and your God, okay? Um, so, I'll just stop it there, and you can watch that video if you want to. Um, I haven't even listened to that whole thing yet. But anyways, so, uh, let's look at some of the commentaries on Study Light. Here's Albert Barnes, Touch Me Not. This passage has given, wait a second. Actually, I want to go back to Adam Clark. Let's see here. It says, Touch Me Not, or Cling Not to Me, has this sense in Job 31, 7. Let's look at that. That's something I haven't even looked at yet, but I, it's probably something I should add. 
Because I'm going to say, uh, let's see here. Okay. Cleave to my, my hands, okay. So it's basically talking about the Greek or whatever there. Anyways, it signifies to cling to the stick, to be glued to. We can look at Matthew 28, verse 9. Let's look at Matthew, verse 28. 28, verse 9. And as they went to tell his and as they went to tell his disciples, behold, Jesus met them, saying, All hail, and they came and held him by the feet and worshipped him. Okay. So Mary Magdalene. Let's see here, Mary. She clung to him. Okay. She worshipped him at, and held him by the feet. And this is like a parallel passage here. <laughs> So that's how we can understand that when he said not to touch me, touch him not, he was talking about not to cling to him because we look at the parallel passage and she's clinging to him. It appears that some of the women held him by the feet and worshipped him, this probably Mary did, and our Lord seems to have spoken to her to this effect. Spend no longer time with me now. I am not going immediately to heaven. You will have several opportunities of seeing me again. But go and tell my disciples, for that I am by and by to ascend to my Father and to God, who is your Father and God also. Therefore, let them take courage. So, let's go back to these comments, on this comment on this video. So I showed him that. He says, I watched your video. It was unconvincing. You changed the meaning of touch with, touch with no evidence. Why? Just a presupposition. Later, he tells Thomas to touch his side and his wounds. Does that also mean to cleave? Well, see, here's the interesting thing. If you're saying that Jesus said not to touch him, you know, don't touch him at all, because he hasn't yet ascended to the Father, and yet later on he's telling Thomas to touch him, and he still hasn't ascended to the Father, then there's a contradiction, you see. So then we have to, under we have to see that there's a misunderstanding along here somewhere. And then we look at the parallel passage where the women cleaved to him, held him by his feet, and worshipped him. Okay, It was more than just touching him and putting their hands on him. They were clinging to him. And he says, no, not to do that. No, there's nothing wrong with the King James translators. It's wrong with your understanding of the verse. So, and again, so I said, you know, he told her not to touch him, but then he told Thomas to touch him, and in both instances, he still hadn't ascended to the Father yet to sit down at the right hand of God forever. And uh, so, yeah, there's a contradiction there. And look at the parallel passage. I know I'm just repeating myself, but I'm trying to clarify there. That's the evidence. It does point to this interpretation of the passage. And it's not saying that the King James translation was wrong. But here's the thing too though, okay, he comments on this video that's about 30 minutes long, where I go over these verses that Kevin Zacker presents that other people who teach this Abraham's Wisdom Doctrine present, and I've debunked them and I gave the correct interpretation. He doesn't say anything about those verses. You know, we're not going to talk about that or anything. We're just going to bring up something new and try to corner you into a trap or something. No, I've already covered this. And the way he's looking at it is wrong. And so, you know, so he, he ignores all of this whole video, basically. And then I try to help him out, and I send him, you know, a link to an old study that I already did it on. I, you know, I gave him a brief explanation up here, and, you know, and then he just craps on that and just totally disregards all of that. So, you know what's going to happen is that, let's see here. And I don't like doing this, but I don't like my time being wasted. So if you're going to waste my time like this, then guess what? You wasted it. So, you know, I like freedom of speech and stuff, and it's okay for people to argue with me. But if you're going to come under the guise of wanting to learn and ask me questions, and then when I take my time to explain to you and give you videos and stuff, you're just going to just completely ignore it like it was nothing. 
and just keep telling me that I'm wrong or whatever, and you're not going to come back with any kind of a you know, logical argument or something, then you've wasted my time, and now you've wasted your own time. So I've got a lot more to say about this false doctrine, so stay tuned. God bless.